a lot of you may not remember this. Hell, some of y'all probably weren't even born when Star Wars The Clone Wars debuted in 2008. But when the character Ahsoka Tano made her first appearance, fans really hated her. I'm talking Jar Jar Binks, Nuke Gunray, Cy Snoodles levels of hate. Fans viewed Ahsoka as annoying, one-dimensional fan insert for the young audience who might tune in to a weekly animated Star Wars show. I mean, she was a child character who acted like a child. And a lot like Jake Lloyd's portrayal of a young Anakin Skywalker, her childish behavior was grating for a large portion of fans. This hate was acutely felt by the actress who voiced Ahsoka, Ashley Eckstein, who said of the backlash, a lot of people did not like Ahsoka. They thought she was snippy, bratty, annoying, and also didn't expect Anakin and Skywalker's Padawan to be a 14 year old girl. So how did one of the most hated characters in Star Wars history go on to become beloved by fans? In fact, she's so popular that she's now headlining a brand new Disney Plus series. Seriously, can you imagine if we were all super excited about the premiere of the Jar Jar Binks show right now? Well, I think it all boils down to a very simple concept, character growth. And I have six writing lessons we can take away from the character of Ahsoka and how she's grown from a snippy child to one of the most important characters in the Star Wars franchise. Let's get started with lesson one. I found another quote from Ashley Eckstein talking about the early Ahsoka hate where she says, I asked fans for the patience. I said, look, no character is perfect in the beginning, and if they were, then they'd be really boring. So please, go on this journey with her. This is a really sage piece of advice that all writers should take into account when creating their characters. No protagonist ever starts out in their final form, at least not if you want a story to have an interesting character arc. Look at Luke Skywalker. He was a bratty, annoying child at the beginning of Star Wars A New Hope or take Anakin Skywalker. I would argue that he was a bratty, annoying child in the first two movies of the prequel of the prequel French of the prequel franchise franchise prequel franchise prequel franchise. Now, I'm not saying that all main characters should start their journey as a bratty, annoying child. There are other character flaws that you can employ. Characters can start their journey as fearful, arrogant, bored or naive. But when you're a teenager with mystical powers like telepathy and telekinesis, and you have a badass laser sword, then you're probably going to be bratty and annoying. Seriously, a lightsaber is like the Star Wars equ equivalent of a lifted Chevy Silverado that your dad bought for you. The point is, you have to give characters room to grow. And the more immature they are, the more growth they show over time. And the more appealing they'll be to an audience as they begin to mature. Also, growth comes through the conflict of your plot, which is also compelling to an audience. Fans put themselves in the shoes of your main character. If they can identify with this character from the start of their journey, and that hero goes on to do things that are amazing, then your audience will feel like they can go on to do things that are amazing. And that feeling of potential is more powerful than you can imagine. So start your story with a protagonist who feels more like a normal person than a superhuman space wizard. But let's talk about our next lesson. So how do characters grow? Or a better question might be, how do you, the writer, show a character become a more mature version of themselves? Well, that's easy enough. Have them make mistakes. Big mistakes, small mistakes, and everything in between. Because even real people can't grow unless we're making mistakes. It's like Yoda says in The Last Jedi. The greatest teacher, failure. Ahsoka experiences a failure early in her life that costs her the lives of several pilots. Young Ahsoka has a serious character flaw, and that is arrogance. This is actually a pretty common flaw among Jedi, but Ahsoka makes a mistake that helps her overcome her ego. During a mission over the planet of Ryloth, Ahsoka is leading a squadron of starfighters. She quickly gets in over her head and is ordered to retreat, but 
In a moment of brash arrogance, Ahsoka believes that she can complete her mission against overwhelming odds. Spoiler, she can't. And her unwise gambit costs her the lives of several clone pilots under her command. This defeat leads Ahsoka to feel a great deal of guilt, but that guilt pushes her to learn and grow. This is probably the greatest mistake in Ahsoka's career, and one that shapes the person she becomes. As she matures, we see her set aside the arrogance that her master, Anakin, was never able to overcome. And that's probably because Anakin is so talented that even when he's reckless, he usually comes out on top. In a way, his talent leads to his downfall. The greatest teacher failure is. Speaking of Anakin, let's talk about our next lesson. Anakin and Ahsoka serve a very important narrative purpose in relation to each other. They are character foils. Character foils are two characters who contrast each other in ways that highlight each of their strengths and weaknesses. Through Anakin, we see the path of destruction that Ahsoka avoids by learning to set aside her ego and accept things as they are, not as she wishes them to be. You see, Anakin is a classic tragic hero in the same vein as characters like Oedipus Rex or Romeo and Juliet. If you don't know who those characters are, then just Google them. They're not from Star Wars though. All tragic heroes have one thing in common. They believe in a lie. And this belief in a lie leads them down a path of self-destruction. Anakin believes that everything he loves will be taken from him and only the power of the dark side can save him from his terrible fate. Not only that, he believes that the Jedi are holding him back and actively keeping him from saving his wife and family. This lie gets him cut in half and burnt up real bad. But Anakin isn't the only character who deals with the aftermath of his terrible decision. There is a debt to be paid by all those closest to him, including Ahsoka. Because Ahsoka made a decision years before Anakin's fall, a decision that Anakin should have made himself but couldn't because of his ego. So let's talk about decisions and how they contribute to character growth in our next lesson. Not only do characters need to make mistakes in order to grow, but they need to take action and make decisions that are informed by those lessons of failure. And this is exactly what Ahsoka does. Late in her career as a Padawan, Ahsoka is framed for a very serious crime, the bombing of the Jedi Temple. Of course, she's innocent, but the only person willing to defend her is Anakin. The leaders of the Jedi, like Yoda, Obi-Wan, and Mace Windu, all turn their backs to her. When she is finally proven innocent, a fact that she maintained throughout her trial, Yoda and the others welcome her back into the fold. Effectively, they want to brush the whole ordeal aside and pretend it never happened. This arrangement is fine for Anakin, he gives his friend Ahsoka back, and it's fine for the Jedi Council because they get to ignore their mistake and pretend it never happened. Remember what we said about failure though? The greatest teacher failure is. Those were your words, Yoda. At this point, Ahsoka has a dilemma. For the first time, she sees the Jedi, the organization to whom she's devoted her life, doesn't live up to the standards that she holds herself to. You see, ever since her failure, losing her squadron over Ryloth, Ahsoka has devoted her life to defending the innocent and doing what's right, even if it means sacrificing her life. In fact, not long after Ryloth, Ahsoka is sent on a mission to infiltrate a weapons factory, where she, along with another Padawan, use a tank to blow up a reactor, knowing that they'll probably die in the explosion. But they'll destroy the factory as well. Ahsoka survives thanks to the tank's armor, but the point is, even at a young age, she is willing to forfeit her life if she believes her sacrifice serves the greater good. And now she's faced with the sad truth that the Jedi as a group are more interested in protecting themselves than anyone else. The Jedi didn't investigate when Ahsoka was accused of bombing, even though she had no motivation to commit such a crime. What's worse, they sacrificed her to a Republic tribunal so that they could make the whole matter disappear. Ahsoka makes the only decision she can. She leaves the Jedi Order, letting go of the only life she's ever known and all of her friends to embrace an uncertain future. 
future. Climactic decisions should completely reorient characters' lives and set them up to explore new worlds and grow even more as a person. For Ahsoka, this meant that she was able to explore new roles like being a rebel spy and she could pass on her lessons to a new generation of characters, which is the subject of our next lesson. Once Ahsoka leaves the Jedi Order, we don't see her again until the Rebel series. By this time, the writers have shifted her role as a character from a protagonist or someone the audience can identify with to more of a sage or mentor-like role. And the audience insert character, the person we're meant to identify with, is now an untrained Jedi named Ezra. When we first meet Ezra, he's kind of a bratty, annoying kid. But through conflict, he grows to become a competent and compelling character. There's kind of a pattern with these Star Wars protagonists. During the events of the Rebel show, Ahsoka learns of Anakin's terrible fate. At first, she doesn't want to believe that Anakin, Anakin has fallen to the dark side, but eventually she accepts this truth and lets go of the friend she once knew and mourns the death of the hero Anakin was. This leads her to another climactic decision when she confronts Darth Vader and fights him knowing that he'll probably kill her. However, she must try to kill her former master in order to save Ezra's life. In a plot twist involving time travel, we're not going to get into it, Ezra is able to save Ahsoka before she is struck down by her former master. At this point, Ezra and Ahsoka find themselves in the world between worlds. A place where time has no meaning and you can travel back and change the events of the past. Ezra sees this as an opportunity to save his former master, Kanan, who died saving Ezra's life. But he can't, and Ahsoka knows he can't. She explains to Ezra that Kanan sacrificed his life willingly to save Ezra. And by undoing that moment, Ezra will die. More importantly, Ahsoka teaches Ezra the lessons of letting go and of respecting Kanan's decision. Just like Ahsoka let go of her friend Anakin and just like she let go of her life as a Jedi. In fact, being able to let go of things and not grow unhealthy attachments seems to be a bit of a theme in Ahsoka's life. Which brings us to our final lesson. The last thing I want to talk about is how Ahsoka's growth as a character contributes to an overall theme. Themes don't just come from the plot of a story or the symbolism within it. Themes also emerge from how a character reacts to the events of their story. A clear theme we can take from the character of Ahsoka is the importance of letting go of one's ego and embracing true selflessness. This is a lesson that Ahsoka learns during her mission over Ryloth, and it is a lesson that serves her well through the events of the Clone Wars and of Rebels. In a way, Ahsoka's commitment to selflessness makes her maybe the truest Jedi we've ever seen on screen, even though Ahsoka herself says, I am no Jedi. Other Jedi certainly preach selflessness, and they definitely think they are selfless, especially Yoda, but they're not. The Jedi are detached. They have detached themselves from the world that they inhabit. They're supposed to be defenders of the galaxy while living in a literal ivory tower. That symbolism isn't lost on us, right? When Anakin comes to Yoda, Worried about visions of losing the people he loves, Yoda tells him to learn to let go of all that he fears to lose. Anakin is a person whose mom died in his arms. He is traumatized by this event. Who wouldn't be? And Yoda knows this. This is terrible advice for a person like Anakin. But Yoda is so detached from the people around him that he can't empathize with Anakin at all. Anakin is terrified of loss, and Yoda is so emotionally guarded that he doesn't remember, or maybe he never knew, what it's like to experience loss. On the other hand, Ahsoka represents true selflessness because she does not fear loss. 
She learns a valuable lesson about loss at an early age when she loses her squadron over Ryloth. Sure, her arrogance cost her the lives of the pilots under her command, but that wasn't the most important takeaway. Here's the true lesson she learned. Those pilots were willing to give up their lives for a greater purpose, and that choice deserves respect. That's the lesson she taught Ezra when he tried to reverse his master Kanan's sacrifice. Ultimately, True sacrifice means that you work towards a better future for everyone and not just for yourself. And you respect the lives and choices of those around you. Okay, that's all I have to say about character growth and Ahsoka Tano. But if you have any thoughts on either subject or you just think I'm flat out wrong, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content and if you want to watch another character breakdown that we did about Peter Malark from The Hunger Games, then check out this video over here. Hopefully it's over there. I don't know. Sometimes I don't get the timing right. As always, keep writing and later skaters.